no idea what the British had in mind when they built this. Or this for the matter. I'm in Mumbai, the gate of India. A city big and busy with lots of colonial remains and a touch of modernity that I welcomed after a month and a half spent mostly in little towns. Yet I stayed here only two days as I was trying to make my way north with some speed. I traveled mostly by train and this is what it looks like on a normal business day. Six and a half hours later. Monkey! Monkeys are found often in India and this one is quite snobbish and not very photogenic. I wonder what it's looking at. Oh, right, the Daulat about Fort Minaret. So, you wanted a swimming pool. Daulatabad once was a thriving city, but the best of it is of course the fort. A little disclaimer here, I get excited like a little boy when I'm around castles. The Indian Middle Ages are coming alive. <laughs> so basically they cut down the edges of the hill, built towers and walls around it, dug a trench full of water and possibly crocodiles and if that's not enough the only access to the top is through a tunnel excavated inside the rock which by the way looks like a movie set. Ok, I'll speed it up a bit just to give you the idea. This could be Moria of the Lord of the Rings or any Indiana Jones movie ever. Ok, ok, I think we've got the feeling. I have never seen a fort more defensible than this one. I mean, look at this, they basically use the mountain as a fort. Ah. Well, there we are. I just climbed <laughs> up here and I'm very glad I don't have to go back because I have no clue how to climb down that. So. Thank you for this little path. Of course there was a comfortable little road, but as I said I get easily overexcited around awesome castles. Well I don't want to be the one who brought this cannon up here. Because man, this is the highest point. That is Daulatabad from afar. Great. After that I had a few culinary experiences. Ah, this is Ramphal fruit. Something that I've never tried. Look, looks like this. Very good. Okay. And sugar cane juice, done the traditional way with bacteria. This is the result and this is the cow getting paid. <laughs> So now to the Elora Caves, another UNESCO World Heritage. We have Buddhist caves, Hindu caves and 4 km that way some Jain caves. Wow, I mean all of, all of this has been carved out. Imagine what, the, what a massive work this must have been. Some caves went really deep into the rock. It must have taken them ages to realize them. This one looks like a hull of a boat, but it actually mimics the wooden structures that made up the temples when they were not hammered out of granite. Imagine you're in the 7th century or something, and you live in this apartment in this Buddhist monastery, and you get up in the morning and out on your little veranda and uh, well, you have all of this. That must be fancy. Some were extremely elaborate and some surprisingly simple, looking even modern in the design. Then there was the king of all carved temples. So this was once a regular hill until somebody decided that this was due. See this? This is one gigantic piece of stone. It is basically the biggest sculpture I've ever seen. I mean, you can literally walk into it. Okay. 
because Elora wasn't enough and I wanted to see more caves, I went to Ajanta. These are also some 1400 years old caves you probably have never heard of and some of them still have the original paint. By visiting these places I realized how little we know about Indian history, culture and art. Actually, we aren't taught a thing about it, which is a shame. My journey goes on towards Rajasthan and there won't be any more cave related videos, I promise. Thanks for watching. See you next time.